Oh, okay, so it's on. Um, hi. Uh, I certainly didn't plan on making a video like this today. I thought I might make a video, but not, certainly not for this. Um, so a little earlier today, I was playing The Legend of Zelda, the OG one, on my Wii U, and uh, I got a text from my uh, friend saying that it said the Game Theory guy died. And, uh, since, um, he had mentioned several times these Game Theory videos on YouTube, I thought it was a guy who did those. So I thought, oh, you know, that, that that's weird. So I, I went on Google and I, I looked him up, and, uh, I, I Googled Game Theory guy just to see what he's talking about, and then I saw it was about John Nash, who, I guess, he, him never really popped into my mind at that time, as far as Game Theory goes, um... At least, you know, not 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 at that present time. And uh I'm I'm just gonna talk about my experience with Mr. Nash a little bit and uh you know, how he's affected my life, although, you know, you could argue if he has it all, but I'm gonna talk about his relevance in my life. And um usually my videos are more scripted. This one's gonna be more shooting from the hip. It's gonna be sorta of lengthy, so you know, if you're not if you don't really care a whole lot then don't worry about watching, but um, it might be a little educational to get my uh, feelings about the matter. Um, I'm looking here on Wikipedia about this man, as I have. How I got, I'll start with how I got to discover who this man was and my experience, you know, his relevancy to me, and then I'll talk about what happened today, or, uh, it, it's still today, okay, um, I'm losing track of time, it's sort of late, I want to go to bed, but I want to make this first, and I'm doing this in one take, so if it sucks, I'm sorry, um, because my teacher sucked, which I'm not going to give to my teacher, but she sucked, because of that, a lot of people in my class weren't doing very well. So every every semester or so, or every half semester, she gave us these um, bonus assignments, which basically they were a ridiculous amount of bonus points. <clears throat> and you just had to do some stupid little thing. One of them was working a bunch of math questions extra, and she gave like a bonus point a piece for every question you answered. And she had it anyway. I'm I'm getting really off topic here. I'm I'm really scattered. I don't know where I want to start here. But my I, one of the one of the semesters, I'm thinking it was the third. Um, we had to do a, a a report on a mathematician, and I didn't know any mathematician. I was like, you know, who who am I going to do this on? And I would have been about 13 at the time. <clears throat> and my dad said, "How about you do John Nash?" And I'd never heard of Nash before, uh, so I looked him up. And his story fascinated me. And of course, at the time I thought, that's perfect for a research paper. And But the more I read about him, the more I came to admire him. And the more I wanted to take what he did and use it as inspiration. I'm not going to make this a biography, but I'm, I'm just going to, in case you don't know, um, John Nash was born, it says here, in... Eight, 19, 18, 19, in West Virginia. He, um, I think he went to Princeton University. I'm, I'm not reading all this information right here, but I think he went to Princeton, majored in mathematics, and um, he, he did his dissertation on something he, I don't remember if he created the concept or if he just found a new utilization for it. It was game theory, which basically... It's probably really more beyond what I'm talking about here, but it's basically a decision-making tool that, let's say, if this person's doing this, you know, what they do can influence what you do here. It's really kind of confusing. It, it makes sense. It's it's not hard to understand, but sort of hard for me to explain right now, sitting here. But it's used a lot in economics now, um, and it was very very uh, well received at the time. And it, of course, got him his PhD in mathematics. So that was good. Um, but when he was young, I forget what year it was. He was probably in his 20s, I think, maybe 30s. He uh, he started having these illusions, and he started to hear things. And 
he was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and he was put in a hospital man it's I, if you had asked me about this man four years ago, I would have been able to give you all these details. I could have read it again, but damn it, I just wanted to make this video. I think he, he, he had a really hard time with it. I think he even had to undergo some shock treatments, I think, at the hospital. And um, obviously that was really tough. You know, I, I can't even – sometimes I think I may have it rough. Some, I can't even imagine having to do that. <clears throat> and for a man who – created game theory like this and had a PhD from Princeton in mathematics, you know, very well educated, to feel almost like he's losing his mind in his entire life. He was married. I think his wife divorced him while I was in this hospital. <sighs> yeah, uh, he met – yeah, yeah, let me backtrack for a minute because she's involved in this too. He met – her name was Alicia Delard, I believe her name was. Her, Alicia was for sure her first name. I forget what her last name was. But – he met her. She was a student, I think, at the time when he was teaching at Prin – I think he taught at Princeton too. I, I think it was at Princeton. She was in one of his classes, and they began dating, and they ended up getting married. But I think after the schizophrenia set in, I don't know if it was because it was too rough for her. I don't know what it was. I used to know these details, or at least all the details that were out. She uh, she ended up divorcing him, I think, while he was in a an institution and undergoing these – I don't know – when he underwent the shock treatments, I don't know if it was constant or just a couple times. I don't know, but obviously it was still really rough, more more rough than anyone could really imagine. But somehow, I through some unbelievable determination and willpower and strength, he said, "I'm done." He stopped taking medication. He. I did want to read this on Wikipedia. I think it said that he didn't go he was born in 1928 i think the illness set in in 59 i think and he didn't go to another institution after 1970 so this was 40 plus years where he stopped taking medication and stopped going to I think he taught at Princeton after that, too. I think he returned and ended up teaching. Now, I know that's in the movie. I'll get to the movie in a minute, but I believe that's accurate. And um, <clears throat> that just – there are a lot of people throughout history that I admire. You know, but most of them, you know, they live hundreds of years, hundreds of years ago. And <clears throat> John Nash was someone who really inspired me because I said he was able to overcome something – like what he overcame, you know that there's that there's that there's that old phrase. If you believe you can do anything, obviously I don't think that's true. There are some things you really cannot do, but damn it, you know he was almost the perfect example of someone who overcame almost insurmountable odds, and he went on to live. I don't, I can't tell you what his life was like, but. really really hard time I'm not saying he didn't but he made the most out of it he he overcame the odds is basically what I'm saying and and that really really when I first read that story it really touched me and it really really inspired me I said if this man could do this you know, it, it made me strive to be better it made me strive to work harder and whenever I think things are hard for me I think look at what John Nash did and I that sounds really really cheesy I know but Ever since I read that story, there probably hasn't been six months to go by where I didn't at least think about him or look him up since then. Which six months, I know that's a while, but I mean, for for someone who's not very relevant in my everyday life, you know, someone who's not relevant in the world today, that's that's a hell of a lot. And uh, but you know, he he inspired me, you know, and he showed me that you know when you work hard, anything's possible, and. There are people who, in history like that who overcome adversity who I admire a lot, but he was the only one who I can think of right now who was, who was living recently. Uh, there were two people, both are now deceased, who really, really touched me Those in, in recent times. Those were John Nash and Randy Pausch, who um, 
passed away from I think cancer in two thousand nine, which I was really I was really sad when he passed away too. Um, if you've never heard of this man, um, if you want to watch the last lecture by Randy Pausch, um, I'm not gonna go into details about it, but he basically shows you how he achieved his childhood dreams, and it's very very touching. It's about an hour long. It's on you know tons tons of channels would have it up on YouTube, so I'd recommend checking it out if you have the time. Really touching, but uh, we'll talk about Pausch later, maybe. John Nash, um, he was probably the only living person who I wanted to model my life after. Obviously, I didn't want to have schizophrenia and overcome it, but model my life in the way to have that push, that drive to be better, and that drive to overcome any obstacles in my way. And um, obviously, I, I got an A on that paper, and I saw... And I'm going to talk about this now because I'm really supposed to be more of a movie channel. I, this is a new channel for me, and this with I have two videos in and haven't anything to mention movies. But um, hopefully, hopefully I'll have a review out sometime soon. But they they made a movie based on his life called A Beautiful Mind. It won Best Picture in 2001, I think, starring Russell Crowe as John Nash and uh, oh god, what's her name? I'm I'm blanking on. The woman's name who played his wife, Alicia. Um, anyway, I talked about how he inspired me. Um, I want to I want to get back to um to his wife for a minute. Um, in 1990, oh god, what was it? Early 90s. I'm thinking 93 or 94. I'm thinking it's 94. Let me see. I I, I don't see it here where I am on Wikipedia. Not not this section. I want to go looking for. I think it was 94. He won a Nobel Prize in economics because of his dissertation paper on, about game theory. It had been used in the field, and it was seen obviously to be very useful. He won a Nobel Prize. And I think at that ceremony, somehow he was reunited with his ex-wife, Alicia, and they got remarried. Uh, this was, I think, 94. They had been divorced for 20-plus years, I think, and they got remarried. Um, and they were still married throughout the rest of their lives, which I think you know, very obviously. I don't know the situations of their marriage, so I don't know exactly um, how it was the whole time. I don't know how they acted around each other, but just knowing they got back together after all that time and after all that stuff that John Nash had been through to get his wife back, that was you know that that just shows you. You know, you you can always, no matter how how bad things may seem that they're getting, you know, things can get better, and that he he really sort of epitomized that. But through all of his hardships, though. You know, he, he found some goodness in life. He he always found a way to sort of overcome it. I know I'm I'm just rambling on, but I, I can't I can't emphasize enough how inspirational that was to me. And I, I hope to live my life more like he more like him, where I can overcome stuff. But you know, a lot of times I feel like I don't. You know, and it's like most people. I'm I'm not any different than most people. Most of the time when stuff gets really really hard, I like to just say, you know, screw it. You know, I, I'm. Whatever, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to worry about it, if I can, obviously. But if I had schizophrenia or something like that, I don't know how I could live like him. I don't know how I could have the courage to walk away from medical help and live my life and somehow overcome it. Now, so I looked at him as a role model for me, one of my, one of my favorite human beings ever. And um, really, and yesterday afternoon at some point I think it was in New Jersey him and his wife Alicia were killed I found this sort of interesting when I heard he died I thought oh he's old he must have you know died of natural causes no he was 86 years old I think his wife was 82 they died in a car crash um from what I can gather the taxi hit a rail let's say they're going down there I think it ran into a rail to avoid hitting another car I don't know who caused it or what but him and his wife were both not wearing seatbelts, and they were thrown from the car, and they both died. And that was just, that's heartbreaking to me, because you look at everything that this man overcame, and everything he fought, and, <clears throat> you know, he didn't deserve to go out. He didn't deserve to die like that. That's, that's horrible. You know, that, that's brutal. He, I don't know, he, he could have died of natural causes. He could have, I don't know, any a number of things, just... You know, he he deserved to be taken by old age. You know, a, a car crash—that's so brutal. You know, and that 
That really upset me to hear. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just, I wanted to, uh, <clears throat> get this video out there to talk about him. Um, I thought about reviewing A Beautiful Mind, but, in his honor, but I don't think I'm going to do that. That's just, you know, I want to give a tribute to the man himself, not the movie, which, the movie gets a lot of crap now. I mean, it's considered one of the lower Best Picture winners, which I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen all the best pictures. Um, when I first watched it, though, I would have been about 13 or 14 when I first saw it. This is when I was really, you know, when I first discovered this man. Uh, it became one of my favorite movies, and it, re it remained maybe top 10, for sure top 15. It was for sure high on my list until I started watching all these all-time great, critically acclaimed films. And it, it moved down some, but I still, it was in the top 10% of films I'd ever seen, easily. And it's a movie that always never fails to touch me. And so I thought about reviewing it, but I just I decided to talk about him. Um, there are a few people who who shaped their lives or overcame things in their lives in ways that I would like to model myself. And John Nash was one of them. Um. <clears throat> Very interesting man. Um, I think one thing the movie was criticized for was that I think it like covered up some of his homosexual acts or something. I don't know, but I, I'm not. I'm done talking about the movie. I'm done talking about the movie. I'm not. I'm not going to say that John Nash was a perfect human being. You know, I've seen stuff about you know he's not. He's not perfect. No one's perfect. You know, people have flaws, and he was a flawed man. But in a way that 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 made him seem more human. That made him seem more real to me. And that made his story hit home more. And and now he's gone. Now he's gone. I don't know. Just the past five years or so, I'd always periodically check back in and see if there's anything new about him. Um, he might have been my favorite human being living who's obviously not in my family or f circle of friends <coughs> I'm talking human beings who don't know me he, he may have been my favorite living and uh, he, he's left a gap behind one of the most inspirational stories one of the most inspirational amazing people who I've ever heard about and he had to die in a fucking car crash and well I guess Man, 1755. I, I've talked a really long time, guys. Um, I hope he rests in peace, but, you know, to all you Christians, he was an atheist, so. But I, I hope, I, I do hope he did, I hope he had some comfort in his later life. <clears throat> I'm not sure there are any details of him. Maybe there are some that I haven't seen, but I don't know how, how well he actually did after he walked away from the hospital. But he had to have done okay because he lived, he was able to create a relatively normal appearing life with schizophrenia, so apparently he did pretty damn good. And wow, that's just one inspiration. I'm getting a little choked up here. Um, okay, I guess that's all I have to talk about with uh, Mr. Nash. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss him. I, I never knew him, of course, but I'm going to miss him. Um, he's left a void behind gap that'll be hard to fill. Uh, alright, um, hopefully I'll have some movie reviews out soon. I want to review all the Pixar movies before Inside Out comes out, which will be hard as hell to do now. <sighs> Maybe I, I might, <coughs> that's what happens when I talk too fast. I might not start it until, um, Thursday when, my, when I'm done with classes. Uh, I might, anyway, well, I might do it tomorrow, who knows, but thanks for sticking around with me for almost 20 minutes if you did. Um, well, all right, I'll, I'll see you guys next time.